Greetings and welcome back to another edition of the End Time Watchman. And the title of our program today is The Right Perspective. The Right Perspective. Uh, when you learn to see things in the, the right perspective, it, it makes them easier to understand and do. So when you're able to see things for what they really are, when you understand what is going on, it really helps you to understand. Even though that situation is a difficult one, it helps you to understand why it is happening and it helps you to, to do what really should be done. So to be able to see things in the right perspective is very important. Sometimes to, to be able to really see things in the right perspective requires you to not react on first impulse, uh, but to step back and look again. You know, step back and, and, and take a closer look, look closer, you know, investigate, ask questions. Sometimes we have to do these things so that we can understand the situation that is ahead of us or in front of us and when we do that we'll be able to see things in the right perspective and often you'll find that things are really not what they initially seemed to be so therefore it is again very important for us to really seek and to find the right perspective in every situation but today we want to pin down on, on one particular issue and that is persecution, persecution of Christians. When we're able to see this in the right perspective, it gives us strength. Uh, it gives us all that we need to go through and to push forward so that we can get to where God really wants us to be. It is not something we can avoid. We have to understand that persecution has been around since the inception of the church and it is something that God uses to advance his work and to advance and to help to build uh, his kingdom. So, it's, you know, I had to say that from the inception so that we can understand that it is very important that we see persecution in the right perspective. You know, all Christians back then and even up to now this very day have been faced with at least uh, the threat of persecution. So it's again not something that we can avoid, not something that will go away, but it's something that we can, that we have to deal with. Some small, some big. Jesus' apostles you know, they face severe uh, persecution because of their witness for him. In the book of Acts, 5, Acts uh, chapter 5 and verse 16 to 18 tells us uh, when he says that crowds came from the villages around Jerusalem, bringing their sick and those possessed by evil spirits, and they were all healed. The high priest and his officials who were Sadducees were filled with jealousy. They arrested the apostles and put them in the public jail. So because the apostles uh, spoke out about Jesus, they were arrested. And uh, you know, when we read on in the book of Acts, we find that all manner of things happened to, to the apostles and other Christians who were bold enough to speak out about Jesus and what Jesus did and who he is. And you will find that a lot of bad things happen to them. But we can examine their reaction to what happened. Did they argue, fuss and fight? Uh, did they complain? You will find that the answer is no. Why? Because they saw things in the right perspective. They knew what the right perspective was concerning what they were going through. Look at Stephen and what happened to him. 
you know he was stoned he was actually one of the first to die for speaking about speaking up about Jesus Christ and he, he did not try to get out of the situation he did not argue for some fight or complain but he even prayed a similar prayer to them just like Jesus prayed for those who crucified him he, he asked God to forgive them and he just uh, you know took what they were uh, throwing at him uh, because yes he's he knew what the right perspective was so he held on to the very end and this is what God wants us to do so even as the apostles experienced power uh, to do miracles and had great boldness in preaching and uh, because of that you know they were arrested and put in jail Some, sometimes they were beaten uh, you know and they, they, they were slandered even by the very people that's supposed to be helping them the community leaders the, the Pharisees Sadducees those people that claim to know God and to love God those are the very people that were persecuting them and this fact is, is sometimes really hard uh, to swallow. But, but God wants us to understand that faith in Him does not make troubles disappear. But it makes it appear less frightening because it puts them in the right perspective. I, 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 I want to say that again. God wants us to understand that faith in him when we trust in him we put all of our trust in him it does not make troubles disappear like other you know other a lot, a lot of christians may think that way that once we are christians that that we will live a, a pain-free uh, blissful experience but it does not work that way so our faith will not make troubles disappear but it makes troubles uh, less frightening it makes them appear less frightening because again it puts them in the right perspective so don't expect everyone to react favorably when you share your faith in Jesus Christ because it just simply won't happen we are living in a world that is ruled by our enemy and sin is rampant all around us and so we are like the enemies in this world at this moment that is why we know that this world is not our home but heaven is our home we are only sojourners we are here to try to help people to find their way to christ and this is our should be our main focus this is the uh, perspective that we should always be looking at that we are here to help people to find Christ to find the right way that is the perspective that each and every one of us should be looking to so as obedient Christians you know who those of us who, who, who are bold and we love to share our faith you know expect some negative reactions and remember that you must be more be more concerned about uh, serving God and pleasing God uh, than about the reactions of people you know persecution should not stop us but embolden us to push forward you know when we are like that God God will always be with us every step of the way just like he was with the Apostles Acts chapter 5 verse 19 and 21 tells us a very interesting story you know uh, continuing from from what we just read from acts earlier where they were arrested uh, continuing on that same story acts chapter 5 verses 19 to 21 says but an angel of the lord came at night the same night that they were arrested opened the gates of the jail and brought them out look at that then he told them go to the temple and give the people this message of life so at daybreak the apostles entered the temple as they were told and immediately began teaching so God was with them then and God is, has promised that if you 
Hold on to your faith and trust in him. If you stay faithful, that he will be with you in the same way. God promises never to leave us nor forsake us, even in, oh, especially I should say, in difficult times. And you know, sometimes in those difficult times, uh, you know, it, it clouds our vision of God. Although God is there, you know, that cloud uh, blinds us to the fact that he is there. Sometimes we don't see him, we don't feel him, but he is always there. I want you to know today that God will always be with you. He will never leave you nor forsake you. So hold on in those situations and push forward. God sent an angel to release these apostles from the bondage they were in. And he commanded them to go, go and continue to do what I ask you to do. But we have to again acknowledge something as here that God will not always steer us away from persecution uh, simply because uh, you know there are spiritual benefits uh, there for both yourself and and others the the angel of the Lord gave the apostles a command uh, that when they follow it it would lead them to a brutal flogging day it leads them to a severe beating and we when we uh, go down to verse 40 of Acts chapter 5 uh, Acts chapter 5 it, it tells us that they were beaten because they obeyed this command of the angel so that shows that God will not always lead us because they're, 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 God always has a plan in everything and you know through what they go through people are saved through what they allow themselves to endure, uh, people are brought uh, into the kingdom of God. Souls are saved and the kingdom of God is built up. And that is what God wants. God wants people to come back to him. He wants people to be reconciled with him. Again, this should be our main and focus, our perspective, that we are here to lead people to Christ. Back in that day of the early church, persecution, it, it, it resulted in the spreading of the gospel to the whole world. And that is how the gospel went out. If, they were, 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 uh, if, if God had blocked uh, persecution, if he had stopped or prevented persecution, the gospel would have stayed within the confines of Jerusalem. But because of persecution, the people scattered all over the world and that is what that is what god wanted he wanted the gospel to to go to as jesus commanded to spread uh, for, you know to samaria and the outer parts of the world all over and that is what happened because of persecution so today the effect can be the very same where many will come to christ because of how you deal with and react to persecution Therefore, to see persecution in the right perspective is to see it as a means of sharing our faith in Jesus Christ. You know, we share in the sufferings of Jesus and one day we will also share in his glory. You know, we have to see everything for what it is so that it will help us to push forward, to win souls for the kingdom of God and to advance that kingdom. Persecution, though painful, will lead you to great blessings from the Lord. Persecution, although it is not comfortable at all, you know, sometimes, you know, it leads to even death. But at the end, it will lead you to great blessings from the Lord. God, Jesus tells us in the book of Matthew chapter 5, uh, verse 10 to 12. God blesses those who are persecuted for doing right. For the kingdom of heaven is theirs. God blesses you when people mock you and persecute you and lie about you and say all sorts of evil things against you because you are my followers. Be happy about it. Be very glad for a great reward awaits you in heaven.
a great reward awaits you in heaven. So hold on. Always remember the right perspective of what a situation lies in front of you. Again, sometimes don't react on first impulse, but step back. Allow the Holy Spirit to minister to you what is really happening and what the purpose of what is happening is. And you'll be able to then understand and see the right perspective and you'll be able to adjust what you, uh, your initial reaction would have been or what you would have initially uh, said. Adjust them uh, to suit what uh, God wants you to, to do and say. So let us uh, hold on to this. It's not an easy word to, to hold on to, not an, uh, not an easy word to accept, but God wants us to hear this today, that we, when, we, we, when, when we really step back and uh, seek to find and see what the right pers perspective is concerning whatever situation that we're going through, we'll be able to understand and see uh, clearly. So I pray for all those of you, all those of us who are experiencing difficulties and hard times, that we will remember our faith and trust in God, and we'll remember that the right perspective is to win souls, and that we will remem remember that there is a great reward uh, awaiting us in heaven once we hold on, once we hold on and we push forward and do what God requires us to do, to help him to build the kingdom of God. Just before I come to a close, I want to reach out to anyone out there who is watching or listening, uh, that I want to let you know that salvation is still available. There are two places that we will end up after we leave this life, whether through uh, death or on judgment day um, it's either in heaven where God wants all of us to be that is why he's doing all what he's doing or in hell with the devil where we will be residing in a, in a lake of burning sulfur for all eternity we will, be, we will be suffering for all eternity God wants us to escape this God wants each and every one of us to escape that because that is eternal. What we are going through, whatever little pains that we may experience is only temporary, only for a short time, a speck compared to eternity in hell, suffering in it, uh, you know, with pains that are far more excruciating than anything that we can experience here in this world. So God wants to give us salvation. And salvation is available today, right now. And all of us, we need salvation because it is our ticket to heaven. We need salvation. It does not matter how good you are. Scripture tells us in Romans chapter 3 and verse 10 uh, that no one is righteous, not even one. Why? Because verse 23 says, for everyone has sinned. We all fall short of God's glorious standard. That is why we need Jesus and we need salvation. It does not matter how good of a person uh, we are. All of us at some point in our lives have sinned. And so we need salvation. We need forgiveness of those sins. That is why Jesus came and did what he did over 2,000 years ago to, to die, to shed his blood for the remission of our sins. Not for his, because he did not sin. He never sinned. It's all because of us, because he wants to help us to get to heaven. If we don't want to accept that fact, then we will have to suffer the consequences of our decisions. Romans chapter 6 verse 20, 23 tells us what will happen. It tells us for the wages of sin is death, or the penalty for our sin is death. That is eternal separation from God in hell, as I explained before. But that verse goes on to tell us, it tells us about the free gift of God. The free gift of God is eternal life through Christ Jesus, our Lord. So Jesus Christ, he's offering our, us salvation today as a free gift. So he's not telling us that we need to earn it, or we need to buy it, or we need to do something to get it. 
it's a free gift. Just like somebody buys your gift and give it to you, you know, you don't have to pay anything for it. But it costs them something, yes, but for you it is free. Same thing with salvation. It cost God everything. But for you, he's given it as a free gift today. Salvation is a free gift that we can have right now. Romans chapter 10 verses 9 to 10 says, If you openly declare that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from uh, the, the, the dead, you will be saved. Verse 10 says, for it is by believing in your heart that you are made right with God. And it is by openly declaring your faith that you are saved. So simply put, voice it, believe it, and you will receive it. Receive what? Salvation today. It is available for each and every one of us. No one is exempted from this. That is why it says in Romans chapter 10 and verse 13, it says, For everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. Everyone, no one is exempted. So it does not matter who you are, where you come from. Call on the name of the Lord today. Call on Jesus and he will hear you and he will answer you. In a world that is growing darker and darker and darker by the day, we need Jesus. We need to see the light so that we can know where to go. And Jesus, he says that he is that light. In John chapter 12 and verse 46, he said, I have come as a light to shine in this dark world so that all who put their trust in me will no longer remain in the dark. So all we need to do today is to put our trust in Jesus and we will, he will come as a light to shine so that we can no longer be stumbling over things that are in front of us, but we will know how to navigate ourselves around them and find the path that leads to life, find the path that leads to a blissful life for all eternity. This is what God wants for each and every one of us today. So accept Jesus Christ before it is too late. On that note, I want to come to the end of our program for today. And again, I just uh, encourage you to share this program uh, far and wide. Help us to spread the good news of Jesus Christ to the entire world and there are no restrictions on these videos you can share them as you like upload download do ever what you want but just uh, let other people see and know that God is love that God is there that he is real and that he cares and that he's welcoming each and every one into heaven as they accept his son Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior again Thank you for watching. Thank you for listening. And I'll see you next time, if there is a next time. God wish you bless you and goodbye. Don't forget that to contact me for any reason, you can find me on Facebook by searching for Curtis Minister Roach. Minister Curtis Roach. Or our page, The End Time Watchman. Just leave me a message and I'll reply at my earliest. Also, subscribe to my YouTube channel and be blessed by the hundreds of videos available to you. Please feel free to share any video to help us spread the good news of Jesus Christ. You can also follow me on Twitter at Roach underscore Curtis. Should the Lord continue to tarry, see you next time. God bless. Sound the trumpet now Hear the Father say Yeah, it's coming Don't get left behind Don't get left behind Boy. The rat, yeah, it's coming Don't get left behind Don't get left behind, Don't get left behind.